Hi, George here. Let's take a look at how you can change this image here over into black and white, the black and white conversion, just like that in Photoshop Elements. Now we'll be using the Elements Plus plugin right over here, the black and white conversion there. The reason for that, let's go back here to our layers, click on that, is that the normal conversion tool here, convert to black and white, is actually not that great here in Photoshop Elements. We have a few presets over here and they're okay, but nothing great in there. You can usually find one that's all right. Then we have our intensity adjustments over here, red, green, and blue, and a contrast slider. The big problem here is that just a little bit of a movement here gives you a huge movement on the image. So there's very little control. If I go over here and see what happens, it just really blows out or burns in completely. So very bad controls in here. If we go over here though, and just take this, I'll delete this layer, get that out of there. There you go. Go back over here to Elements Plus. And we're looking at the color and tone section. And here's the black and white. This comes in as an adjustment layer that's already better. So we can then do some more things with this once we have it converted. Choose OK. And this comes in with a whole bunch of adjustments in here. Not just your red, greens, and blues, but also your yellows, your cyans, and your magentas. So far more controls in here. The controls are more subtle, so they're easier to deal with like that. I set this to 40. There we go. You also can come in here and do a tint if you want to and adjust the coloration of the tint and the saturation of the tint. And of course up here, this also comes with some presets and there are more presets here than in the default black and white inside of Photoshop Elements. Let's now see where you can get this. But before I do that, just wanted to mention that if you want to really learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my complete training course. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Okay, you can get this over here from elementsplus.net. Let's bring that website up. And this right here. Now I don't have any connection with elementsplus.net. I don't get paid anything when I talk about their program. I just happen to like this particular plugin. And then here we have raw corrections, color and tone, plus a bunch of other stuff. And the black and white is right here under the color and tone section. Now, if you have my elements photo coach, I already have articles in here on all of these different tools and I'm adding in more every single month. Right now we're right down to here, color and tone. So find an article about that. And this plugin only costs about $12. It hasn't changed in price for ages. Simply find the version that you are working with and then get the plugin for that version. Okay, so let's get this out of the way and we'll see how this works. Now, when it first comes in, it goes through and it does a basic adjustment for you. That's the auto adjustment right here. Preview allows you to show or hide that. And then in our colors in here, starting at the top with reds, most of your flesh tones are in the reds, some kind of peek into the yellows. So right here is most of your flesh tone. And if you're doing portraits, that's the main thing you want to adjust for. So the nice thing about this is we can adjust in just these very subtle different color ranges. I'll grab the slider here and I'll go back and forth like that and just see what the difference is. You get an idea for that. And then I'll kind of edge into where I think it should be. Now the auto setting in here was at 40. I think a little bit darker is better, a little darker and you get a bit more contouring happening in the face in here. So I think that's a good setting for that. Let's check our yellows. We're seeing a lot in the background there, a little bit on the flesh tones, but it's mostly in the background. So I'll lighten it up just a touch. You see here we're getting some banding happening in that background. By lightening that up, I can lose some of that banding right in there. And that helps to kind of smooth that out. There's still some banding in there, but it's not that bad. Let's check our greens, clear to the top. Clear to the bottom. Okay, it's really just up in here and up in here. So see if I can blend that into the back a bit. If you go too far on any of these selections, you get some weird artifacts happening like up in there. It gets kind of messy. We can go a long ways up before that happens. So I'll just use that to lighten up those spots in here. So it helps to blend it a bit better for the background. That's good. Let's check our cyans. Clear to the top. Clear to the bottom. I'm not seeing anything on the cyan. So let's just set this at zero not doing anything for us. Let's check our blues. I saw something right down here. Left hand side. There's a lot darker. Okay, so down here, this is blocking up in the black range. Over here is getting kind of weird looking. But it's a shadow area. So I'll take this down until it begins to block up. Right in there. And then I'll back off from there just a little ways. And right here, it's still good and dark, but I'm beginning to see some of the hairs in here. So there's a good setting for that. And magentas go clear to the top on this one. You're seeing a lot of it right down here. Nothing much any place else in the image. A little bit in the mouth in here and in the eyes, but not much. So I'll just focus on the area down here. 
I think a little bit of this lightening up will tend to lighten those hairs up a bit. It's a bit more detail right in there. So here's a good setting for us. Now the way you preview this, hit the preview button and you go back and forth and just look for things that are kind of standing out as if they didn't change properly. One thing I'm seeing that is standing out is the greens up here and we purposefully put those lighter. So that's fine. Everything else appears to be a good transition to black and white. Okay, choose OK. Switch back over here to our layers. And as you see, it comes in as a new layer up here. I can show or hide that. Now we can take this further if you want to. You can blend this into the background or we can reduce the amount. Let's first go to opacity here. If I bring opacity down, what you get is kind of a subtle coloration in here, just very subtle coloration. It's just mixing the black and white and the color together. And that's oftentimes a real nice look. We can go real subtle on that. So that's using a lower opacity setting in here on the black and white layer. I'll set this back to 100. Other one here is using your blend modes. Hard to say exactly how it's going to work. So I'll just click on dissolve. And then I'll use the wheel on my mouse. I'll just roll through this and see what we get. Multiply is kind of stark. That's really way too much. Dark in color, that's not too bad. Let's see if that's much of a difference in here. Just a little bit richer. Okay, going out further, lighten. That's interesting. We're losing the greens and they're keeping most of the flesh tones. And keep on scrolling down. Some of those don't work at all. Overlay, more of a high contrast look. And soft light, more contrast, but not a big difference in there. Hard light, a bit more contrasty. So you can use some of these blend modes for even a better, more interesting image by blending your black and white layer into your color layer. I'll put this back to you normal again, just have our standard black and white right there. And don't forget to check out my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. Again, the link for that is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications so you won't miss any of my new videos. I'm doing new videos all the time. And I'll see you next time.